Hey guys, so it is Jack C and today I'm going to be teaching you guys about the three types of farm slash auto farms that you need for your Minecraft world, what they do, and I will be referencing you guys to some of my tutorials so you can learn how to build all of them. Now farms in Minecraft aren't 100% necessary, you can get away with not actually building any, but they are something that makes your life much easier so you can focus on doing things that you actually love doing so maybe if you're a redstone or a builder you can focus on doing that if you've got a few farms to help you get uh, food and resources and even xp or if you just like building fun farms which is something that i like to do these are some great farms for you to build now there are thousands of things that you can automate in minecraft you can automate basically everything but today i'm going to be talking about a few of my favorite things that i think are super useful for your minecraft survival world but let's start with the most important thing you need to survive in real life and in Minecraft, food. Now, food farms can come in all shapes and sizes. They can be semi-automatic like this, this, or this, or it could be something more automatic like this, or this. So semi-automatic farms tend to be a little cheaper to build, so that's why they're great for early game, where fully automatic ones can be a little bit more expensive. Here we have a semi-automatic wheat farm, which gives us wheat that we can turn into bread and gives us enough seeds to just be able to replant it here. Just like this. And it is really, really low on resources, it just uses a few dispensers and a bit of waterworks and redstone. Then you have the next step up of automatic farms, where something like this cow farm is a little bit more complicated, but is the same sort of thing where you have to do something to the farm and then you can get your sort of meat out of it. So we sit up there breeding the cows, the babies drop down and when they turn into adults they burn and die and give us cooked steak. Now there is a simpler cow farm, I'll leave a link for that in the description down below called a cow crusher. Um, it's just a simple super tiny farm but it sort of runs on the same principle here of breeding the cows and um Sort of, but instead of burning it, we crush them using a mob limiter. Now, what happens there is um, the mob cap takes over and destroys the cows because there's too many in that one space. Now, this only works on Java and not on Bedrock, the cow crusher farm, but something like this would work on both versions. And then this big one here is just a bigger semi-automatic wheat farm, but it also includes other crops. So if I press this button here, you can see it harvests all of these plants. Then I can press the button again to turn the water off. They'll get picked up and dropped back to here. So again, same principle, and then we can replant them. Now moving on to the automatic farms, this is one of my favorite automatic food farms, the chicken farm right here. It's a very smart design. The chickens lay the eggs, so they get dropped into this dispenser. It throws them out, and then once the chickens grow up, they burn. Very similar to the cow farm design that we mentioned earlier. Now this not only gives you um, chicken, it also gives you feathers. That's going to be something we're going to be talking about a bit more towards the end of this segment. Um, the other drops these farms give you and how to decide what one's best for you. And of course, you can make this chicken farm a little more complicated like I have over here. Where I've actually got a lever to flick on and off egg collection so I can turn it into an egg farm as well, which is pretty useful. Now this final automatic farm here is the melon and pumpkin farm. I love this farm because it allows you to have a little bit of a food source as well as having some useful materials for something like potion brewing with the melons. And pumpkins are always great to have for decoration and building blocks as well. So this is a super useful farm. Now that is one thing that you'll notice with all of these farms. Not only do they give you food, but they also give you something else. So with the wheat farms, they give you seeds, which you can compost and turn into bone meal, or you can replant with them. With the cow farm, it gives you leather, and so on with the chicken farm, gives you eggs. Now that might be the thing that helps you decide which of these farms you want to build, what food you want to get, and what byproduct you also want to get. So have a think about those, and remember all of the tutorials will be in the description down below. Now let's take a look at item farms. Now item farms are a farm that allow you to harvest a specific item much easier. For example, behind me we have an automatic clay slash mud farm, which is super useful because I mean, you don't have to go into rivers swimming to try and get any of this clay or mud. Now some of the item farms that we're going to be mentioning here can also be used as XP farms, so we'll be re-going over them when we go on to XP farms. But some of them can't be, for example this clay farm here only produces an item but is still a super useful farm. 
Now behind me here we have the next item farm which is one of the most useful ones out there, the charcoal generator. Now these farms and generators can be very closely sort of misnamed. So generators tend to be things that generate um, a item when you feed something into it. So for example this charcoal farm you feed wood into it and it generates it. So that's why we call it a charcoal generator rather than a charcoal farm. Now this farm is super useful because if you have it set alongside a wood farm or even just by a forest, you can chuck your wood into this chest up here and it will start generating charcoal, meaning you don't have to go into mines to find a um, sort of a fuel source. Now charcoal can be used in all the same ways as coal, um, so you don't have to worry about that. And you can see it produces a lot, so it produces one charcoal for every wood you use, so it's super efficient um, and it's super actually compact as well. Now farms like this, as along with stone generators or cobble generators, allow you to focus on low level mining for where you can find the ores. Um, so you don't have to worry about looking out for coal or mining out for cobble or stone when it's all up on your, around your base because you can easily generate it or farm it. Now this next item farm here, the iron farm, is one of the most useful Minecraft farms you can have. Now these come in all shapes and sizes, here is my design, link for a tutorial will be in the description down below. And it allows you to never worry about having to mine for iron ever again. And trust me, that is something that you will never be able to go back to worrying about again once you set one of these up in your world. Now you can make a smaller one like this or you can make a larger industrial one, I'll leave both links for both of my farms in the description down below. This sugarcane farm also works in a similar way for bamboo, it is a great way to get loads and loads of the material. Now this sugarcane farm is used for sugar and to get paper, great for books and potions. Um, bamboo, the bamboo version of this is used for the scaffolding. Um, but again, you can make them big like this or you can make them smaller. I'll leave links for both of them in the description down below. Um, or you can make something like this where it's a smaller and it's a combination of this. I haven't done a tutorial specifically on this, but I have done a tutorial on the cactus farm and on the bamboo farm here separately and then I've just simply combined them at the bottom. Now we're going to have a look at XP farms, but before we do that, we're going to just quickly mention the two farms that can be, or well, the two types of farms that can mainly be used for XP end items. Now these are mob spawner farms or mob farms. Anything from a guardian to an enderman to a zombie to a skeleton farm are great for items, but are also great for XP. Um, now I will be listing my favorite XP farms, starting from simple to high, um, to, my fa um, to more complicated but just wanted to give all of those an honorable mention. When choosing your XP farms, you're gonna, gonna kinda be at the mercy of what stage you are in the game and what drops you want. For example, this cave spider farm here is great for XP, but also gives you some useful drops. And if you already have found a cave spider spawner, which is what this uses right here, you might as well make one of these. Now this is a great mid game farm as it's pretty simple to make. All it takes is some, just a little bit of tricky water mover, maneuvering. But other than that, it doesn't require any redstone at all. As you can see here, there's no redstone in this farm at all. Now the same could be said about my spider farm. The link for that will also be in the description down below. The spider farm is a little bit more complicated, but I personally prefer it um, just because they're a little bit easier to kill and manage it than the cave spiders. Something like a blaze farm is more sort of made for when you're getting towards the end of Minecraft because blaze rods are used to get to the end where you can defeat the final boss. But it is a great, great farm for XP and blaze rods. And blaze rods are super, super useful for brewing potions and making materials. Now, the one on your screen now is my blaze farm. Link for that will be in the description down below. We can see the sticky pistons that fly across here and they actually push the blaze into lava and then we can go ahead and kill them, getting loads of XP and loads of drops. Now we're going to take a step back and just quickly mention a really easy way to get XP when you are starting out. Now, all these farms are great, but if you want a super duper simple way to get XP, just remember that when you take an item out of a furnace, it actually gives you XP. So if you're spilling potatoes, make sure to take the items out and when you do, keep your levels and don't die because you can actually rack up quite a few XP levels doing that. And the same goes for smelting metals and any sort of other thing in those furnaces. Keep in mind blast furnaces and smokers do have a reduced XP output, so try and use normal furnaces if you want that XP. 
Now we're going on to the final big boss man of all XP farms, the Enderman farm. Now this gives you loads and loads of drops of ender pearls, probably too much, like you'll honestly throw away some of these ender pearls, but it also gives you loads and loads of XP. Now the Endermen spawn at the top, they run to attack the Endermite, and then they fall down and they're trapped and you can kill them. So it's a really super simple concept. Now the only thing that sort of rivals this XP farm is it the Guardian farm? Personally, I think the Enderman farm is much easier to build than a Guardian farm. That's why I've put it on this list and given it this spot over the Guardian farm. However, keep in mind, Guardian farms do have some good and useful drops. So if you want to build one of those as well, feel free to. You can never have too many farms in Minecraft. Now, as well as getting XP to enchant and name things, all of these XP farms are great for mending tools. Just hold the thing that you want to mend in your offhand. Make sure you don't have any mending armor on and kill away and that way the XP will be thrown into the thing in your offhand and the Enderman farm is obviously going to be the fastest and it's insane how fast it is. Now keep in mind that there are tons of other farms other than the ones I listed here. For example my sheep farm, the link for that will be in the description down below, is another great farm for items like wool. You also have things like flower farms and other sort of fun block farms like the moss farm that is directly below me here. And they come in semi-automatic things like the moss farm or in fully automatic like the um, wolf farm. So just if you are looking for any tutorials, make sure to check out my tutorials playlist that is on my channel. And I have loads of farms on there that can help with your Minecraft worlds. So on that note, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed learning all about farms today. If you want to learn more about secret doors, leave a comment down below and I might just do a video about secret ways to hide your base and impress your friends in your Minecraft world. So... I will see you guys later. Subscribe and stay carbonated.